Okay. It's recording now. Hi, CJ. Oh. Good All right. Okay. Let's try this again. I'm sharing. You can all see my screen. Yes. Okay. And then yep. make this a little smaller. And put this away here. And then, okay. Project management uh, present. So it fills up your screen marvelously. Okay. So tonight's agenda is announcements and upcoming events. That's what we're going to do now. Uh, then we come with introductions. And um, for some of you who got the email last uh, uh, yesterday, uh, I already revealed what the question is. So we can get through the answers quite a bit. But the question is, what are reasons a project you participated in was late, over budget, or canceled? Um, just to kind of see uh, what the experience is um, uh, around the, uh, uh, our meeting here. Um, and um, so, and then after introductions, we do the program. Um, Donna uh, Johnson comes online and uh, uh, goes through the screen, um, the, the slide deck uh, with her, with process about project management. And then I'll do tools and then we do Q&A and who buys. And for those who uh, <clears throat> just joined us, um, it might be that Q&A is longer and we stay longer. Um, but if you need to leave, yeah, you can just leave. We, we won't take it uh, personally. It's uh, all good uh, if you got out of the event, what you got out of it. Um, uh, thank you to our sponsors. That's uh, the Community Foundation, Unitarian Universalist Congregation. Not right now because they give us the in-person event location and 10 uh, TechSoup, Keller Williams and Poly Systems are sponsor. Thank you for all of the support. Um, the upcoming events um, is so August 4th, it's about um, tips and tools on building and improving your brand with uh, David Wildman of Wildman Design. Um, September 1st is a grant opportunities and finding funding sources with a panel with Laura Similink, Susan Golden, Bernice Kurtevash, and Gloria Moorman. Um, uh, Donna, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they are all local people, right? They are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Laura is from the Community Foundation? Yes. Okay. Then Susan Golden is from the Collier County. Bernice Kurtevash is from um, Workforce Investment Board, Government Grants. And Gloria Moorman is with, um, <laughs> she's, she's the development director for, oh, I can not, it's just like a total blank. I'll think of it. Yeah, okay. So in October 6, it's about volunteer management, software, and logistics. In November 9, uh, 3rd, uh, do I need a professional tech or can I do it myself? Um, that's going to be an interesting <laughs> conversation here. And December 1st, we have the holiday party. And we hope that by the holiday party, we can actually be together in person here in Collier County in uh, Naples. What happened? <laughs> I moved my mouse. <laughs> so bad, bad mouse. Okay. <laughs> And uh, but yeah, it does. It does seem that August and September are st uh, will still be uh, virtual, mm -hmm. um, from what I kind of think. But maybe it's changes. Yeah. Um, so August fourth, September first, October four, uh, six, November third, and December first. They are all first Tuesdays of the month. Um, so that you can kind of block out that calendar if you want to. In uh, advance. Uh -huh. um, I um, published for the last uh, couple of years a, uh, a list of events, online events that are about technology. Um, and this month I also added a, um, a five lists for against um, the, uh, about anti-racism. Um, so it's um, it's on Empitech project, and then you see who the providers are. You can get a, a Google Calendar that you can subscribe to. Uh, just click on that little button here and make it your own calendar. Yeah. Um, 
but careful, it gives you just 46 um, events in there. So maybe you want to create a, sub, a separate calendar and copy that over. And then there are my, the Burgess top five are this. Normally I take, um, I select a few uh, of the uh, events that I would like that people would go to or that I would like to go to. But uh, this time I just um, created a list of uh, five anti-racism racism um, uh, resources, yeah. And then that's the whole list, yeah. So today you could have gone in three, yeah. Tomorrow there are six or seven, yeah. So the whole list there uh, is um, certainly, and you can get to it by um, HTTPS NPTP US, or you take it from the slide deck what we, that we will share um, tomorrow together with a uh, session survey. So you can tell us what was good and what was not so good or uh, what you would have liked and what other topics you would like to see. Um, so to get two links and if you want, you can also sh um, join us on Facebook on our um, Tech for Good tribe and the uh, uh, Facebook group. It's a closed group. Um, but uh, you can certainly join us as you are now a member, so to speak. And um, that's how we try to stay in contact in between meetings, but yeah, it does not always happen. If, um, but yeah, so this is definitely, if you want to do your own conference, yeah, you can put it together with multiple days full of presentations. So, and now we come to introductions. Um, think about the question again, because this slide is gonna disappear. We all go around the room and I'll call out the, the next three people, so to speak. And um, what are the reasons a project, uh, a project you participated in was late, over budget or canceled? So, and um, I start, so my name is Birgit Polly Hart. I own a web development company and I'm also um, the founder of the nonprofit called NP Tech Projects. Um, and uh, the reason a project I participated in was late over budget or canceled. So uh, one was there was um, there were people on there, um, although there were lip service that uh, need to change it, they were um, kind of blatantly holding back or sabotaging it. Um, so uh, another one was that there was never um, the the staff turned over and there was never um, buy-in from the top or from the ED and so the project just fizzled you know they they paid um, that but uh, yeah their contractors but then that was it they wouldn't uh, run further and um, uh, late is um, yeah it's sometimes pretty common it just because yeah, life happens everybody has a plan and then life happens but that's kind of how uh, that was for me so i'm gonna um uh, mouse stop <laughs> i stopped sharing and i would think that uh yeah so the next are donna ann and julie okay um i'm donna johnston i am Retired. Um, I do a little bit of consulting on the side, mostly grant writing, some strategic planning. Um, and I worked on quite a few projects. One, a government project where the, well, we'll talk about that later. At any rate, I think um, with the government project, we put, it was a planning grant with the Department of Transportation. Um, and we put, we did all the planning, we did all the work for it, we pulled the whole project together. And then those of us who were hired temporarily to take care of this left. Consequently, the final project never actually happened, even though they got $750,000 to implement it, it didn't get implemented. <laughs> So, and I think with most nonprofits, you know, it's just the duties that people take on while they work for you, they bring certain skills and when they leave, the next person that comes in doesn't have that same set of skills. Um, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And? <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Ann Katzif. Um, I am a web designer and develop, front-end developer. My company is Ask Design. Um, I live here in Naples. Um, as far as the project getting canceled, I have many to choose from. <laughs> but I'll choose a more recent one. Um, I think it was just really complicated. The client wanted some really complicated um, configurations on a website for an e-commerce website. And uh, the terms of the purchase, you know, in order to be able to purchase one part of the program, they had to be already have purchased another part. And then it, it just sort of mushroomed beyond the capabilities of the usual uh, stuff. And we had to call in an expert and his quote was really high. Mm -hmm. And that kind of put the nail in the coffin. Yeah. We said, okay, let's, let's go simple. Keep it simple. So that's it. <laughs> Been there, done that, huh? I see a lot of people yeah. going, uh huh? <laughs> a lot of head nodding, yeah. Yeah. So Julie, your turn. Okay. Yeah. Um, this year, of course, uh, COVID-19 caused a lot of problems. Uh, we were due, the Zonta organization is the organization I'm with, and uh, which is, I'm with the Zonta organization from Bonita Springs. They are an international organization that uh, does a lot of work helping women and children and families. And um, our major fundraiser of the year is called Woman of the Year, and it's a big luncheon usually, but this year we decided to make it a big dinner and that we were going to try to make twice as much money as we made in the past. So great big plans and then That's we are right. in March and we were due in April 19th. Yeah. So since then, everything has been pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. So now we're scheduled for November. And uh, I doubt that that's even going to happen the way the numbers are going at this point. So we may end up just uh, canceling out completely for this year. Normally we give uh, scholarships to uh, women who are returning to school or some people who are just school, yeah. in yeah. high school, yeah. one or the other. Um, and we were trying to get more money so that we could help more women. So uh, okay. we're on hold. And that's main, mainly because of COVID, but then secondarily because we're part of this national organization who said, don't take any money from anybody and don't do anything. So for six months, just about now, we've been sitting on our hands doing nothing. Yeah. And I really am surprised that we did that because there was so much that we could do to help people. Service projects is the other part of our Mm -hmm. ambition and yeah. uh, we weren't even the, able to do a service project yeah so julie i'm sorry i have to interrupt you we have about 15 other people here who also need to be introduced <laughs> yes please <laughs> i'm finished so, <laughs> uh, so uh, janine megan suzanne i'm just going for my screen i'm sorry yeah okay i just i'm unmuting myself so hi everybody um, I work at the Jewish Federation of Greater Naples, and I work as an administrative coordinator. I work a lot with our membership and the Donor Perfect uh, database, and uh, you know, oh, our resources and things like that. So um, this would not be uh, with this organization, but uh, in the past, um, the ones that I'm familiar with, there's been issues with the tech. So uh, it would be something like um, implementing to a new system and then um, you know that's not going as smoothly it's taking more time they're noticing errors maybe with the data transfer so that would be one and then another was um, going to like a, a file system in the cloud and it wasn't Dropbox but something similar but then they pulled out of it because they were worried about security so that one so those were were the two ones that come yeah. to mind. So one was second thoughts and the other one was um, consultant work, yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay, all right. 
we have gone up yeah. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan. Um, first time joining this meetup. I'm actually joining from Pennsylvania. So welcome. We have another for... one from Pennsylvania here. <laughs> Long distance meetup. Um, yeah. I currently work for the city of Philadelphia. I'm a UX strategist there. Um, and a project uh, in a former role I had, I would say one of the biggest issues was it was treated like a technology project and it really was more, should have been treated more of a change management. There was a ton of organizational readiness that needed to happen for the technology to be successful. So that led to um, once we were trying to implement, then realizing, oh, we need a lot more support. We need some change management resources. So a lot of stuff was late, budget, yeah, all, all of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. welcome to the meetup and yeah, waving Hi. to Pennsylvania. Hi. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne, Bundings Land, I work for the University of Florida. Um, and uh, my, uh, my glitch is current. Uh, my team is working on something and uh, there is a lot of confusion and the instructions weren't clear. And I think the biggest issue right now for this team is Zoom fatigue. We Zoom have so many well. meetings. That, uh, that's our big issue. Oh, wow, Zoom fatigue. I'm, I'm writing this down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what thank you. What type of fatigue? What type of fatigue? Zoom. Zoom fatigue. Oh, Zoom. Oh, gosh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, Paul and CJ and Irina. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, <clears throat> joining you from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. All right. Um, Welcome. Brought two projects that, that come to mind uh, both failed for the same reason. The technology was decided upon without good input from the people that were going to use it. And there was never a commitment from those people, nor I don't think an understanding of how it would improve their lives. And I see this happen on a regular basis. So that's it. Over to you. All right, CJ? Yeah, sure. Hi. I'm CJ. I live in New Jersey. Uh, I have two projects. I have one, I work for a very large company as part of new business. And um, I was part of the UX strategist uh, there. And they completely ignored everything I said. And when they, the review came around, my very nice, very hardworking Russian born project manager had written all the copy for the website. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have a degree in English, should I go over it? And he goes, no. And so in the review, the client said, this looks like it was written by someone who English wasn't their first language. And then they scrapped the whole project. But more recently, I worked for the uh, state of New Jersey as a contractor, helping update the website, but they lost all their budget. So. Oh I'm my, looking. yeah. Yeah, well, welcome to this meetup. I think it's the first time you're here as well, right? Uh, yes, uh, I missed one uh, to your last one. I apologize. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to apologize. This is a free meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So Irina says she doesn't have a microphone on your computer, and she said uh, she wrote it into um, the chat, and she's a web developer, and um, she works with a variety of nonprofits in Montreal, Canada. So we have a Canadian contingency here. <laughs> You're from Vancouver, from um, um, uh, Victoria, and now from uh, Montreal. Yeah. So next up is um, Amanda, Mark, and Linda from Auckland. Uh, no, from New Zealand. Sorry. Uh, hi there. I'm I'm a freelance communicator. Um, so I have done work with nonprofits. Um, I have a two day a week day job with the, a local philosophy department doing their communications. Um, I don't usually run projects, but I usually take part in them. And one of the biggest failings that I've seen with um, projects, mainly ones that overrun, I don't usually notice what the budget is, um, is just 
managing people in different um, different arms of the project. Um, the most recent one that I, I was on was actually for, a, I guess it was non-profit, but it was more commercial. Mm -hmm. um, and it just overran so much because there was only one person in overall charge and they were just pulled every which way and they couldn't always get to, um, to looking at content that was being prepared or managing the other different parts of the project. So um, it, it slowed everything down. That was the, the main thing. Um, in terms of budget, um, I would say the scope creep is one of the biggest things that I notice. Um, you know, when a client doesn't have a defined objective and they kind of underestimate time and what is needed, um, then things do start to creep. So, um, so yeah, th th that would be my contribution to that. <laughs> and yeah, it's my first time in West Coast of Canada. Hi there. Also from Canada, West Coast, also uh, British Columbia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in Vancouver. Yeah. Vancouver. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Welcome. All right. Thanks. Welcome. Yeah. Mark. Hi, I'm Mark Benson from Naples, Florida. I've been involved since early on with this uh, Tech for Good nonprofit tech group. I um, am also uh, have been deeply involved with the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Greater Naples in their communication strategy for two years as a volunteer, among with many other volunteers. And the situation that came up was that we had a, a grant or a fund or an individual that was willing, a couple that was willing to give money for us to redevelop our website. Uh, we did a lot, a lot of strategic planning and design effort ready to hire consultants and new leadership came in and pulled the plug. And so I am no longer a volunteer for the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Greater Naples. Oh my, <laughs> sorry to hear that. Oh, yeah, oh, really sounds bad, yeah. Um, so um, yeah, uh, Mark is um, an in-person uh, meetings, he's our logistics officer and feeds us all <laughs> and organizes the food and, and uh, uh, Donna also organizes the, the drinks so it's kind of, yeah, um, yeah, sorry that we can't be in person, but I'm also so happy that we get the um, British Columbia um, area here and Philadelphia and New Jersey, it's really cool, yeah, so Linda, you're next, I'm sorry. Um, hi everyone. I'm uh, Linda from Auckland, New Zealand, and I'm self-employed, uh, as well as working on, with some not-for-profits on the governance board. Um, what I'm finding mostly at this point in time is budgets being cut because of COVID and changes in priorities, and that's affecting the projects. Right, excellent, yeah. So next up are Lori, Karen, and Ken. I, Karen, if you want me, I can read it, but uh, yeah, you're welcome to. Okay, I just unmuted. I'm Excellent, go for it. I'm not in a great environment, so um, I'm s sorry about that, but um, I work with a variety of nonprofits doing a combination of marketing strategy, consulting, and building websites and designing brochures. Um, and what I've found in terms of projects is the most common thing that I run into is that the person who wanted something to magically appear didn't really understand the effort that they would have to put in to define the requirements, to generate content, to review progress, to make decisions. And as they finally get deeper into that, they realize that maybe they wanted something bigger, different, whatever, from what they originally specified. So that tends to make projects late. Yeah. I'm kind of a minimalist. I try to say, okay, that's great. Let's phase this out. Let's get you something that you can use right away. Um, but it's, it's still inevitably, if there's going to be a holdup, that's where it's going to be. It's going to be on the client end. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, thank you for joining. Yeah. Oh, thank you for doing this. Did you tell us, uh, Karen, where you're from? Uh, I'm in Oakland, California. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another Oakland. Oh, who else is in Oakland? Hmm? No, no. Uh, Linda is from Auckland. 
New Zealand. Oh, Auckland. That's yeah. a little different. <laughs> totally different. Yeah. Sounds for me the same, but I'm. <laughs> Got it. All right. <laughs> so Lori and Ken and then Louise and Leone. Was it Louise, Louise? Lori next. Okay, from Lori. Yeah. Do you want me to read it? Oh, she's, uh, oh, yeah. okay. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Okay. I'm the systems manager at BC Wildlife Federation. We've been playing catch up with cleaning up our data, but now ready to start setting up coding to ease reporting. Um, impatience is the biggest problem when they don't understand. And she doesn't have a microphone, so. <laughs> Welcome, <Yeah. I'm> sorry. <laughs> impatience. Impatience, yes. But that not necessarily doesn't derail a project, but yeah, it puts yeah. a lot of strain on people. Yeah. So She's Ken. I'm talking about the flower. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm uh, Ken Deedle from Durham, North Carolina. All right. I think we've been represented yet. Um, yep. I've worked with a few different nonprofits over the years. Um, and I've also done project management in the IT space professionally. Uh, at the moment, I'm working with Independent Animal Rescue. Uh, the obvious project is uh, our annual fundraiser uh, got canceled because of COVID, and now we're transitioning to try to figure out how to do that virtually online. Um, and so I attended one of these sessions a week or two back on some helpful hints on online fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to, uh, that was the obvious answer. I wanted to pick a non-obvious <laughs> answer. Uh, a tiny project was that uh, this organization needed to rewrite uh, standard operating procedures. Uh, being an animal rescue place, uh, they have a, a, a spay and neuter program for feral cats. So the standard operating procedures to process the animals through the uh, vet operation. Um, and I'd say that ran over time. Um, because it's completely volunteer uh, oriented and nobody really knew who had uh, to have input into what these procedures said. Um, and every time we thought it was ready to be published, we re realized someone else wanted to proofread it and contribute some more to it. And we never really had a deadline. So it's hard to say that we went over time. It just felt like it took forever. Yeah, took forever, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. That's all. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> so the Louis and Leonie Louis are the two. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Louise Gilmore. I am another Canadian. I'm in Toronto. Um, oh. I work a nonprofit, uh, and uh, one example of project going over a budget is uh, when the timeline extends. Uh, suddenly, you might find yourself supporting two systems and therefore paying for two systems, uh, and you might end up doing that for much longer than you originally anticipated. Uh, that's an interesting one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My God, yeah. All right. Last but not least. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leonie Lewis. I am in Naples, Florida. I am working for a nonprofit, Cancer Alliance of Naples, and we are located in Bonita Springs. We serve both Lee County and Collier County. And what we do is we provide financial assistance to cancer patients who are going through chemo or radiation. So we help them pay their rent, um, their bills, or just any necessities they need. And we also provide um, support uh, through uh, counseling and we provide a food for life cooking class and my role there is the community engagement specialist um, but since covid that has turned into the virtual engagement specialist um, so i have been trying to learn a lot about tech uh, this is actually my first time coming to the meeting well, welcome uh, to the tech for good yes yeah. thank you thank you and i would say um a project that went over, I wouldn't say over budget, but it did turn up being late. Um, I would say it's because um, I had just recently started the position and we were redeveloping the website. 
and my role or my responsibility was to create the navigation structure. However, I have no knowledge in tech, so it just took a little longer because I had to research um, what that entailed, what our website would look like. Um, so it took me a week or two longer to turn that in, but it, that's what ended up happening. Yeah, welcome to the meeting. I hope we can uh, meet you here in Naples um, soon. Um, and um, I'm, I don't know if I should be uh, sorry or not to, to um, uh, miss all the Canadians that join our uh, virtual meetings. Uh, we have one more, that's Shannon, who just joined us. Um, we do introductions, um, so we want to know your name and your organization and uh, what are reasons that, um, that a project that you participated in were either uh, late or over budget or um, canceled entirely. Okay, hi there everybody. My name is Shannon Brownring. I'm with the Registered Veterinary Technologists and Technicians of Canada. Uh, we're a national not-for-profit association uh, representing over 8,700 RVTs across Canada. So, uh, so our role is largely advocacy and uniting and supporting our provincial associations. Um, I'm a one-person shop, so that's a reason why I <laughs> often am a little late or something, is uh, I, I often have a lot of my plate at the same time, and it's, it's um, I'm easily distracted um, with other fires that need to get put out, so the ability to stay focused, stay on, on task, and, and, and get something finished when I have the burning brush over here is, is a bit of my challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's all our challenges, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so I, yeah, did I talk over somebody? No, I used to do this, but I tried to not to do it. But so I hand it without further ado over to Donna. I make you a host and then you can share the, um, the screen uh, and go through the rest of the uh, slide that you brought to us. I think you need to talk a little faster though. Yeah, I will. But I, I loved all the all the introductions just to can I say that yeah, and uh, what people are uh, working on and um, yeah yeah go ahead. Tom. Okay, I'm going to share this. It's loading. Can you see it? Not yet. You need to kind of select which fin window you want to share it on, I think. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Oh. Do you want me to share the, the slide deck and you just kind of... Yes, if you could do ahead. that because I'm but, not seeing it and I don't want to waste time. But I, I'm not the host anymore, so you need to kind of give the host back to me. You, you hover over my little oh, uh, window and then use the three dot button on my face or above my face. And then um, click on it and then make me host. All right, I see it now. I'm sorry. So, but you disabled screen sharing. <laughs> there. Your host. I'm host? All right then. Yeah, your host. Let's do this. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. This one. Okay. Um, let me do this. Okay. Oops. It went over the full screen. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we go here, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Based on everything you guys said, I'm hoping that this presentation will help you. Um, and there's actually four phases of proje project management. I mean, we're making this as simple as possible because it's not really that complicated a process. It's the tasks and milestones and all the building you do that makes it complicated. That's the complicated part. But we start out with our first phase being initiation. Um, second phase is planning. Third phase is execution. Fourth is closure. Um, and we'll briefly go through each of these. 
Next slide, please. Oh, back. And right there. Okay. Initiation phase, depending on how complicated your project is, um, it's good to do some type of feasibility study. And then this is where you identify your scope. Seriously, because one of you mentioned that scope often grows. Um, and you're right. And that can run you way over budget. Um, oh, we're not there yet. Okay. Um, you need to identify your deliverables. All right. What do you want? Um, what do you want to end up with? Um, you identify your project stakeholders, which is very important. I mean, who is going to benefit from this? Who needs to have input into the process? Um, and I think a lot of times feasibility study and then the next one, the business case, um, where you lay out your cost, compare it to the benefits you expect to get out of this project. These are the two items that are most important to a nonprofit board. This is the strongest part of your argument as far as getting their buy-in. Um, and you really do, any nonprofit, you need your board to support you um, on any kind of project. And then you put together with those two pieces your statement of work, and that's your objectives, your scope, your deliverables, um, and you put it all together as a working agreement. And you identify your team. And this, I think, team and a lot of the problems you all pinpointed tonight, I think having a very open team, a team you work closely with, um, is very important. Because um, your team are the ones with their buy-in, they're the ones who are going to help you get this complete. Um, on time, hopefully on budget. Um, so, okay, next slide. And then your planning team. And this is where your team comes in. And this is where you need your team to be hands-on. Um, you can come up with the idea and they can bring in all the resources they have. They can bring in their knowledge of the um, organization to begin with. They can identify anticipated problems that you may not see. Um, and they can help you lay out the whole project plan, including milestones, um, as well as workflow diagrams. Um, and with project management, you have all these linkages, um, especially in a complicated project. And this is a good way to do it with all these sticky things on a board. Um, as your whole team is working together to plan this. And you also put together your financial plan where you identify your budget, um, tighten it up, try to figure out where you may have problems, may need a little more money or time. Um, and then you start gathering resources. And this is another place where your team comes in. If you work well with your team and they're involved with this whole process, and they, you have their buy-in, you're listening to them, um, not just letting them talk, but you're actually listening to them. You will have a solid team that's gonna help you complete this project. They will help you identify the resources that you already have, um, anticipate any risks, any places where there may be a problem, and then they will help you kick off the project. But their buy-in as, you know, a lot of times a team works better when they, Feel like each one of them are being heard. Um, so there are a lot of people skills involved as well as the planning. Um, okay, next screen. Um, and then execution. <laughs> and this is where all the things you've talked about now go into something like this. And um, Birgit will show you the different, the different um, software that you can use for this. But it, you line up your linkages, what needs to be completed before something else can be completed. Um, you identify your milestones, where are the big points in your project that when you reach this, it, you know, maybe it's time for a glass of wine or something. Um, and you're briefing your team members constantly. That's the big thing is communication between team members. And a lot of the software packages, you can do that because they identify what they have completed or what percentage of something they have completed um, and, and that type of communication through the software really saves on meeting times. I mean, you need face-to-face -face during certain parts of the project, but you know, I hate sitting in meetings when I can be at my desk getting something done. 
Um, so the software helps with that communication. It helps identify problems where maybe someone is lagging a little bit. All right, why are you lagging? So you're on it right away before it becomes a real issue. Um, and you're monitoring the quality of work as well as you go through this. So you know what's complete and you can actually go look at it, whatever the project is, whether it's hands-on, whether it's software, whether it's whatever. Um, you can actually go look, you know what's done, you can go look at it, you can um, test the quality of it um, and make sure that your, the quality of the work that's being done is, is high standard from the beginning. Um, and then you can manage the budget because you can see how much is costing you with project management software, you keep track of the hours everyone is putting into their piece of the project. You're keeping track of cost um, and so on. It's okay, next one. <laughs> um, and then closure. And this is where the project is complete, team success, you're celebrating. Um, but what you need to be doing is analyzing the performance. Um, is the project, now that it's complete, do, is it functioning the way you wanted it to? Do you have, have you met all your milestones? Um, the goals you set out in the initial part of the project, have you met those goals? Um, and then you an analyze as well your team performance, um, who did well, who kind of is more of a follower, did well, but is a follower rather than a leader. This is a great way to kind of identify who on your team may be ready for higher management position. Um, and then you document the closure. Um, we have met our goals. The project is complete. We're within budget. You know, all this is the positive end. If everything goes well, we're within budget. We're on time. Um, these are the deliverables. These are the benefits. Um, and then you have your post-implementation reviews. And this is going back to your team. Once your project is complete, everything is running smoothly, or you think, you think it is, um, you go back and you have your team give you some more input. Do you think it's going well? What would you fix? What would you tweak? Um, and then you account for your used and your unused um, budget. So do you have money left over? Did you go over budget? Um, so you need to account for all of that. Okay, next, next. And this kind of goes back, your ongoing monitoring and review. This is, I think, a great chart. Um, just, you know, once you're all done, you need in some way to measure the success, the ongoing success, once your project is complete. Um, and this is kind of a good way to do it, to go back to the beginning and just go through things, see what kind of things you need to measure, what's important as a goal, and work with that. I mean, did you meet your objectives? What were the original ones and what did it turn out to be? Because sometimes that shifts, and I've heard a few of you say that. Um, okay, so now Birgit's going to talk about tools, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to kind of cut you off. Okay, <laughs> I thought that. No, I thought that's not the sign. <laughs> I thought you were giving me a hint. No, no, no. Okay, um, yeah, I, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I have a couple resources um, toward the end of the slide um, show. But the bottom line is, you know, you've, you've done the work. And if you were thorough up front and your team was allowed to give you as much feedback as they can and you listen to their ideas and you work them into the project plan, you know, you're not going to have scope that grows through the project. You're not going to have people or part of your team who are trying to sabotage it. And I have worked on teams where they didn't feel their input was listened to. So they did try to sabotage the project. So just create that team and pick wisely. Pick people that can work together as a team. Um, I think a lot of really thorough project planning is people skills, knowing who to pull into your team. 
um, and make it work. Make it work. Be a listener. So, thank you. All right. Okay, very good. Cool. Awesome talk, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, yeah, as uh, Donna said, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the tools. And when I look at the reasons why things didn't work out, um, it wasn't the tools that didn't work. So if you uh, pick a tool that helps you with the project management, um, any tool will help you, um, but it's still the other parts that uh, will derail um, a project once in a while. So I have, oops, yeah, this computer is a little finicky. Um, so um, I uh, just have a, a few examples for you. Um, one is um, just a Google Drive running to-do list. Yeah, this is kind of, yeah, so this, that's for a website project, yeah, and just have the to-do items and then the person behind it. Um, we are not talking about um, a, a big uh, site, yeah, and then some in between something, yeah, so, um, but there are no deadlines in there. Yeah, I just want to make that pointed out. We are all flying by the uh, seats of our pants at the moment. Uh, so the, 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 and with websites, um, your designer is always a, a, a bit on the, um, the uh, yeah, it's, it's on the speed of the client. Yeah, and whenever that works, that works, and it's hurry up and wait. Um, I, it, it's pretty much what I did for the last 15 years or so. Um, so another example is, for instance, a book production in Trello. Trello is a Kanban board. That's um, uh, a project management idea from uh, Japan. Came, um, and so you have every, uh, the tasks uh, listed. And then for each of the um, phases of your project, you have another list. Yeah. So. This was, uh, this was the task list, and what you can do in Trello is actually, if you have a, a, a list um, in, a, in a list form on a document, you highlight that, and then you paste it in uh, one of those columns, it uh, grades for every task that's in the list a card. And then the card, um, you can then have additional communication, um, have additional information, you can have, um, and I'll show you uh, one a little later, where that was all built out. Yeah, so here that's for one of my events online, online events. Yeah, we have the different stages. So let's see ideas, speaker ideas, speaker recruiting. Um, they are creating online assets. And then, uh, yeah, the card kind of for that particular event moves from one section to the next. If it's done, yeah, kind of do we have the online assets? Do we have to promote the Q&A? After the event, it's yeah, and then these are the events that have already been done, uh, or where I still have to create blog posts. Yeah, and another one is our ongoing documentation project at uh, at WordPress actually, um, and we have a few that's kind of so these are the needed pages and changes. This is the research that we need to do. This is work in progress, and you see it's a little color coded now, um, getting a little bit um, more. And we have a, a yeah, so work in progress. So everybody's working on it. This is posted and um, is up for review. And then we have um, uh, a, a published section. And then um, from there on, yeah, we're kind of uh, just holding things here. These are the uh, actually the pages uh, that we kind of yeah, it goes on and on and on. Um, and we have one. Um, one list item or one list at the beginning is all the documentation. Yeah, what's a, a page inventory, um, uh, then creating standards, uh, contributors, and lessons, and these kind of things. So that's kind of a Trello board or these different Trello boards, how you can do. Then one example is Asana. That's a little bit more involved. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, one task to, to be done. Uh, but there are many, many other tasks. I can filter down to my tasks, just my tasks, and <laughs> it's getting less anxiety introducing, inducing. Yeah, so there are only a few tasks for me in that project, but the project manager has a, a lot of different things and also organized it in a board, but you can also organize it in a list in Asana. Yeah, so you can see where the deadlines are um, uh, or what's already done and where still there needs to be um, interference there. There's a timeline that you can put together. Well, this doesn't have a timeline because 
again, you know, it has a calendar, and then the, the progress, so uh, 96 completed tasks, 44 incomplete, overdue tasks are 10, in total 140 tasks. So uh, uh, this has a, a few reporting measurements as well. Um, so in, in a Trello board, you can actually assign things to, you have checklists yeah, like here. So these are to-dos for that particular task. So you have subtasks, um, or you can do the labeling kind of thing. Yeah, and assign it to the members, yeah, yeah, whoever's on that. And you do this as well. Um, and then the next example is um, backlog. Um, it's one that I find um, we have as a company signed onto it uh, and say, okay, so this is, you can have a multiple, you have an issue list, yeah, but if they're, they're all closed, so yay, we're done. <laughs> but you can also have a board. Yeah, a, a Kanban board like Trello, where you have the yeah, what's open, what's in progress, what's resolved, and uh, waiting for input, and you can actually change the um, uh, change the categories here. Um, so I, I like that. And another example is one that's a little bit more populated. It would be this one. Yeah. So you could do it in a list like this one, and then sort it by different status or priority. Um, or you can also have it in a Kanban board, yeah, where um, yeah, and the uh, various things are still in there. Um, so this one also has a wiki, um, which I like very much because you can then um, uh, very every time something comes up where you need documentation, and you say, okay, we figured that out how it works, but now when we implement it, we need documentation for that, be it for training or for decision making purposes because not all the implementation is actually technology. It's more making the decision for your organizational processes. Yeah? So uh, I, I like that to have that in here uh, as well. Um, and then there is um, Basecamp is kind of the, uh, a pretty good uh, system that can also be used for communication where you can have messages and group chat and doc files. That's kind of all encompassing um, in there but it does not have the Kanban board um, with the progress uh, there, and it does not have a, a Gantt chart. Yeah. So the, these are the ones that I use. Um, and I was kind of thinking, oops, oh yeah. And then um, on Meetup, I had this question, what are the ones that you use? And, um, Anne actually I had quite a few uh, on her list, and then Paul also uh, contributed. So um, sometimes it's just um, enough to do a, a columnar pad with pen and paper and just write it down as a first, um, as a first draft. And then um, yeah, when you kind of figure out what all the, 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 the things are, kind of put it in the software. Um, you, um, yeah, we have done uh, project management on an Excel spreadsheet with just the task, the deadline, the assigned, and, um, um, but that's, and, and then the rest was done in email or in, uh, in other uh, situations. Google Drive, we saw a uh, example there. Oh, oops, yeah. Um, in the calendar, Dropbox for file sharing and QuickBooks for financial. So Paul had uh, one that's called Iowa, if I spell that right, uh, pronounce that right. And that has also a mind mapping feature. And uh, so you can combine it so, with your, um, uh, plan and kind of try and map it out. Um, it's definitely a, an interesting uh, approach to do uh, because if you have multiple aspects of things, yeah, like the person who has the Asana, uh, will have, uh, yeah, she has the, the, the content writing about it and she has the project management, offsite and onsite project management. And then you have a, a gun timeline, which is your list, and then where are the critical paths um, and how are you progressing. In, in that, um, in a visual task manager. So that's actually a great find, Paul. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. like that. Um, um, so the, the last one is the Mind Doodle. Um, I, I, I don't think I found that, uh, but I wasn't, uh, I'm just looking at my, my open things and I think it was too late that I kind of look uh, at it. Hi, can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Mind Doodle was up there because um, 
it was a mind mapping that I used to use. Okay. But I've replaced it now with AOA uh, because AOA does sort of what Trello or Asana does and mind maps and combines the two. So I, I found it to be an interesting and useful tool. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. It's, it's a recent launch, so uh, uh, it, it's not as well known. Yeah. Thank you. So, and uh, after I kind of went through this, okay, which tools do I use? Um, I think for you, it would be interesting to know, um, okay, what are, or kind of assemble when you're looking for software. So, um, was it Karen? Uh, you asked about the, um, um, how the team members interact with it. And sometimes it's uh, actually like pulling teeth. <laughs> But um, sometimes it's um, actually, uh, so it depends on the minimum requirements and how you use it and kind of keep using it. And yeah, um, so I've, I think a minimum requirement is that you have a task list that is hierarchical. So you have a main task and subtask and, uh, and then have the statuses like open in progress, waiting for input, keeping uh, for the meeting and then resolve. Meeting means we need to talk about it in our next project meeting. Yeah. And waiting for input is, okay, I'm not clear about that. I send somebody an email or a notification and I'm waiting just for that to get back. Um, the team member assignment is definitely um, critical because you wanna assign tasks to, to people, right? And then the notification management and the due date management. Notification management is, okay, if somebody assigned me something, um, I want to know about it. If somebody um, answers my question, I want to know about it. If somebody comment on a task list that I was working on and um, yeah, comments on it, I want to know about it. And I don't want to kind of uh, think, okay, I go to the system and is there something new? Is there something new? Yeah, and nobody posted and all of us, uh, so I rather would have that in an email um, to, or even in a, in a Slack or a text message, yeah, just kind of something happened there. Um, the notification minutes is really uh, critical because some people might, uh, might, might, wanna, uh, might be waiting for you. And especially in a client uh, consultant job um, or project, it is the, the client um, and the impatience that uh, some people talked about, uh, that's certainly uh, uh, interesting for that. Um, you definitely want to have due date management, not so much that you have a due date there. You should have due dates on er everything because um, if it were for the last minute, nothing would get done, right? So, <laughs> um, but it's also the reminder so that you get uh, a week ahead of time, you get a reminder, oh, next week this is due. Um, and then I talked about the wiki space or documents. Is anybody uh, kind of thinking that we missed something in that uh, minimum requirement list? Look, I did it again. Bad, bad mouse. <laughs> okay. The resources that um, we have for you, there's a, a nice um, article and text loop why nonprofits should use project management if you haven't yet. Um, then free project management tools for nonprofits. There are a few more on that uh, in that article that I talked about. Uh, Trello, we know. We know about Asana. I have no idea about FreedCamp, but it's definitely a, a versatile project management tool, it says. Then MeisterTask, um, that also seems to be like um, a, a MindMeister integration, which is an online mind mapping tool. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Bitrix24 um, is another project management, ClickUp, <clears throat> and uh, Basecamp. Uh, so these are the ones that they had. Um, and then Lucid Chart is another one with mind mapping tools. Yeah, uh, Donna uh, had this. Yeah, in. it's it's just a a good visual workspace. Um, yeah. And some of my material came from there, just identifying the different stages and the importance of this, that, and the other thing. Um, just how can you map everything out so you're successful? Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Poke around in it. Yeah, and I, I, I like the post-it kind of idea there. So I, I do too, yeah. I do too. 
And then um, the other one, Villanova, they just, they actually have um, a program for, and they have some resources out there that, you know, you don't have to buy anything, you don't have to sign up for a class, but they do have some good um, um, information on process and things to look out for. Once again, what to look out for. Yeah. Um, and then it looks like they have a list down there. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of, uh, so Luis uh, um, posted in the chat, uh, they mm -hmm. use uh, a smart sheet and can charts as well. Okay. So what I want to kind of um, talk about what Karen's question was, can, can we please talk about how other team members interact with your task list? Um, so, um, other, other team members, well, uh, the task list, we assign it. Yeah, so um, our designers or programmer, they get uh, tasks assigned on all various projects. Um, and then they report back. And yeah, it, it takes uh, everybody to get used to kind of what is the process that we all stay in touch and all use the same system. Um, the clients is the one that is sometimes a little hesitant to get into the systems because they have to create another account and if it's not um, tied into their email, like the notification, if they don't get notification that is actually in their face, um, you, you sometimes need to send a text message. Oh, I did some updates on the project board. Can you go there and kind of look through that and look at your assignments, so to speak? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it really depends. Yeah. Some uh, client, one client is really very good and going on a weekly basis. What we also do, and I would suggest it to any project, is a, a, a weekly project update. Even if it yeah, doesn't matter on deadlines or something like that, just have a list of this what we did last week or this week. So if, if I would do it, on, I normally would do it on Friday. Yeah. Um, so this is what you did on uh, this week. This is what we plan for next week. And this is what we need from you as the client or from other uh, team members to actually make that happen, what we want to do next week. And then, um, so these are blockers. And um, so if you have a team that kind of shares on an asynchronous basis, you want this from your team members every Friday, a kind of a little email. What have you done? What are you planning to do next week? And what are your blockers? What, what do you need me as a project manager? to unblock for you. Yeah, uh, like um, they haven't gotten the, um, the information from the client, they haven't got the, the assets, they haven't got um, a, a call back from the board members, all this kind of thing. So you can, as a project manager, you, I feel myself being the, the, the traffic cop and the more I put rituals in the process, the uh, faster I get people kind of thinking about, okay, Friday, what have I done? What do I do next week? It's not so much that you lie or kind of what your aspiration, it's just kind of what happened. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what we tend to do in a bigger project. Yeah. Yeah. And that works well too. If you have your team letting you know, let's say Thursday evening, Friday morning, what they've accomplished, what the roadblocks are, how you can help them. Um, believe me, it just keeps the project rolling so you can deal with any problems there are before they get big. Yeah. Um, and then you organize it and send it off to your client or your boss yeah. or and your it, board. Yeah, it also um, educates my my calendar for next week. Yeah? Who do I have to uh, plan meetings with? Yeah? Who needs help and, and a slot on my time calendar? or the, the week after, yeah, so. And, um, and it keeps your, your team members engaged because they need to do the work and you need to take care of any roadblocks they have. That's your job as a project manager. Um, and if they know you've got their back and you're gonna do your best to make it work for them, um, they're gonna give you their best. So. All right, so we are at the end of our kind of plan thing, but uh, we certainly can do another uh, uh, yeah, conversation, Q&A. Um, what would you need help with? What is, um, yeah, I, yeah, 
what you want to talk about, what, you know, what your uh, project is. Louise put a link out there for a smart um, sheet. Yeah. Yeah. In the chat. Well, thank you, Louise. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I like things color coded. It looks smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, some of your, some of the, um, I'm not sure if, if the software Birgit talked about tonight, but some of that software you can set up to generate email reminders um, to go out to your team. And um, it's automatic. Once you set it up, it just goes to work. So it's, it's um, a great yeah. organizing, they are great organizing tools, mm -hmm. seriously. Yeah, I like Backlog because it sends me every week, a, a weekly what happened or what's going on, what, what are the due dates for next week, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also every time something happens on an issue, yeah, I get an email. So I can really, uh, when I'm doing my twice a day looking at emails, I go through that as well. And then of course there's a link in there and then I go to the, to the thing. So it's really important, yeah. Also for me as a reminder, yeah. Oh, I have a due date. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, are you using, any of you using a system or a, a tool that hasn't been mentioned yet? Right, Megan mentioned right, W-R-I-K-E. Okay. So, um, Megan, um, do you want to talk about a little bit how that works? Oh, and sure. Lauren, it, it's um, very similar to um, like Asana kind of reminds me of that you can have the different you can have like list views you can use a Kanban board you can also build out a Gantt chart and have the view that way so it's nice that you have the flexibility of different views I prefer working in like the Kanban so I have like the visual but my manager likes the list so it's great in that way and one thing um that I hadn't done in the other software that we've done here is we have recurring meetings. So we can set up a task to like automatically populate every week. And when we're having that meeting, we kind of get this reminder, there's a task for it, we can build our agenda in it. Yeah. So that's, that's a new feature I hadn't, maybe it's available on the other platforms, I just hadn't used it before. Yeah, that uh, uh, what we use in backlog as well. Yeah, we have one category there that's the project meeting, and everything gets dumped into what we need to talk in the meeting about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they also have, if anyone's interested, they have a lot of great um, tutorials and things to get up and running with it. That's that's been really helpful too. Yeah. So we have a are there a new person except uh, uh, apart from uh, Terence, you are in. You, you just joined or joined a few uh, minutes ago. Oh, and you're mute. Hang on, let me unmute you. Okay, oops. You need to unmute yourself. I can't unmute you. Nope. Can you hear me now? Yes. There you okay. Are. <laughs> I apologize for coming in late on this meeting. I looked at, I wrote down the wrong time zone and yeah. came in late. I do most of my work in agile and having pretty well meetings every day as we talk about what did we, what did we do yesterday? What did we do today? Are there, um, things that are stopping us from moving forward and then as a scrum master I will you know work it work to to alleviate those blockages mm -hmm. yeah that's why I kind of stole my weekly <laughs> project updates is from the agile process of software management but um, I, I think there are quite a few resources out there talking about agile it's agile a j i l e um, 
And there are some resources out there how you can apply it also to other projects than software project man uh, projects. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, my husband, he works in, um, in software development and he, his team um, is uh, doing agile and uh, they changed from whatever the other one was, waterfall, I think. Waterfall. It was. Yeah. Uh, to that. And it took them about two years to kind of get everybody. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was kind of interesting to, to just be on the sidelines and listen to them. Yeah. Well, normally it doesn't, well, I'm not attacking what happened, but I'm just saying that most people don't experience that type of delay. And normally you would have a pretty good implementation within a hundred days. And if you were using one of the large theories like save, so that you have to put in these, align your, your individual sprints into a program, which normally are about four sprints uh, combined, when normally those run like two, so that's two times four, which is eight. So within 10 weeks, the second time you're going through it, it works very well. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was, um, the, I, I read a little bit about it up, and uh, um, if you keep the same middle management, it's, uh, that's sometimes a blocker, and even if you have a lot of hierarchical, yeah, so. But back to um, what we were talking here, any questions, any discussion points? Um, Not at this point, I'll um, get you next. Lori had to go, but she mentioned she's trying to use planner are you familiar with that? Nope. Yeah, me either. Well, you're welcome, Amanda. Is she still here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going once, going twice. Can I mention? Bye bye. <laughs> it was great to hear. Yeah. And yes, you all get an email with three links. One is the link to the slide. One is the link to the session evaluation. And do that first please and the uh third link is the link to our facebook group um on tech for good on yeah on facebook that's where facebook groups happen um thank you have a good evening have a good afternoon and um see you the next time which is august 4th talking about branding branding yes you thank take you. care bye-bye thank you bye, bye. thank you